there's no hiding it. In-depth Bible study, even Bible journaling, there's so much nuance. So today I'm going to take you along in my Bible studies and show you how I do it, little decisions I make on what resource to use or how to take the notes. Let's begin. Hey friends, welcome back to a totally random normal Thursday and my Bible study. But first, let's make some coffee. Good morning. It's actually 10 a.m. We dropped the boys off at school and then we realized it's trash day and we needed to get some stuff out of the backyard. So we spent like an hour cleaning up outside stuff. And now I'm sitting down to do my Bible study. I think the danger of me giving tips online is that like you guys think every single day my Bible study looks the same or that I never have interruptions to my Bible study or it's never like a fight to remember, oh yeah, I need to sit down to my Bible study before I start work or whatever. It's a daily thing. It's a daily fight in a lot of ways and it probably will be for the rest of my life, but it's a fight worth fighting for. So let's see what I have to read today. All right, so it looks like today I'm reading Joshua 13 through 15 and 1 Corinthians 4 through 6. Don't ask me why I have two water bottles up here. <laughs> Joshua 13 and 15, so 13, 14, 15, and 1 Corinthians 4, 5, 6. That's six chapters today. But the other day we had a really light reading. All right, so I haven't even gotten to my New Testament reading yet, and I'm already like thinking about certain resources I wanna check. And I feel like I can't move on to the New Testament quite yet because I have a million questions about what I read. And if I move away from this passage, I'm just not gonna come back. So I wanna check first this resource. What I read was not a genealogy, but it was kind of similar like review. And so I'm just curious if they'll say anything about it in this resource. If y'all don't know, this is a new publication. It came out last fall and it walks you through all the genealogies of the Bible. And I've been enjoying it so far. A lot of times it's like, okay, you could say so much more about this, but I don't know. I also haven't used it enough to truly give you my review. Let me just check to see if they have anything because it wasn't a genealogy, but you could kind of say it was in the way that it went through all the tribes and what they inherited. So, you know. Nope. All right, nothing in here about that. I just can't remember why they repeated all of that. So I'm gonna go to my trusty hunky dory Bible knowledge commentary. I'm surprised I don't already have notes on why this is here in the Bible. Why do they review, etc. And so let's just see what the Bible knowledge commentary says. Maybe I'm forgetting like what I read yesterday. I don't even know. Sometimes you just have those days where you're like mentally tired, you know, and you just feel like you're not as sharp as normally what you are. And that's how I feel. But let's see what the Bible knowledge commentary says and then I'll probably take notes on it. Lately, I've been having to do this with my Bible or it will like flip closed cause just the weight of everything. So binder clips are saving the day lately. All right, so a quick reading through the Bible Knowledge Commentary humbled me. I definitely wasn't reading close enough. This is not repeating. This is a new allotment. I kept seeing like East and the order. And anyway, it's always good when you're checked <laughs> or when you check yourself with other people. I think a lot of people have heard that commentaries are bad because they are speaking an opinion into your Bible study. And rather, I view commentaries as a check to check myself to make sure I'm understanding it correctly. Because I know from my own testimony and people in my life who hurt me by their improper exegesis and understanding of the scriptures, I know that like if left to myself, I'm gonna misunderstand things. I'm gonna take things out of context. I'm gonna miss something important like I did this morning on my own. And so that's just one of the great benefits of a commentary is they check you. They'll tell you if you're misunderstanding it. This isn't restating something, this is new, just for example. So now we wanna watch though and not use commentaries as a crutch. Like we can't ever understand the Bible on our own because we've become that lazy of a reader. But I know you guys are like me and we're not going to ever let that happen because we are just the Bible nerds. Okay, 
So based on the fact that I don't previously have notes here, so I probably didn't misunderstand it, but I could do this again next year. I'm gonna go ahead and write notes that summarize this section. Okay, here's what's happening here. This is why, etc. And because I'm, you know, basically just summarizing the section, these are notes that I could possibly think are useless in a couple years. And I'm okay with that, if even just for the sake of not misunderstanding it next year or five years in advance. Because clearly I don't have notes here summarizing this. So in the past years, I understood what was going on or I thought I did and I just kept moving and didn't feel the need to write anything down. But I'm gonna summarize what's going on here in the Bible for me. And that's okay. And I'm, I'll write them real small so that in the future, if I wanna cover them up, I can do that as well. Let's go. Ha, huh, I'm not crazy. There is repetition here that we had already previously read, but he builds off of it. Okay, that makes me feel a little bit better. I was like, what? Ah, does this happen to anybody else? You just get like lost sometimes. It's been a long day since the last time I read my Bible yesterday. And I've forgotten and gotten confused, I guess. I don't know. friends, I finished my notes here in Joshua. Let me walk you through the notes and why I took them the way that I did take them. All right, so first things first, in chapter 13 and 14, you can see I took most of my notes. You'll see I highlighted in yellow colored pencil this phrase that's repeated about the land allotment to the Levites. And I wrote some notes here about that. Next up, I quoted numbers and that's what's happening here in the blue as well. And then right here, I have this statement about Reuben and the significance of Reuben not getting a double inheritance. When you turn the page, I have this note over here about Caleb. And now I feel so much better moving on to my New Testament reading today. Let me see, it's first Corinthians, right? Yeah, first Corinthians four through six. And in my reading plan, if you guys don't know, if you're like super confused about this, I use my reading plan that I wrote. It's called the Grace Bible Reading Plan. In fact, you still have time. If you join before April 3rd, 2024, you can complete this reading plan before the end of the year, read through the whole Bible, blah, blah, blah. It's actually on sale right now, 50% off until April 1st. It's 50% off with the code 2024 is the year, no space all caps, 2024 is the year. So if you've been kind of regretting that you didn't start a Bible reading plan earlier in the year and you're kind of thinking like, this really is the year that I wanna grow closer to the Lord, but I could use some help and I really want like theology, not just like mindless reading. I think my reading plan is perfect for that. We pair Old Testament with New Testament passages like today, Joshua with 1 Corinthians. And we look for those themes of how essentially God's people deal with the same problems, but they're just changed on different sides of the cross and they're handled differently, hopefully. You see these patterns of like, like right now we're looking at wisdom and how the wisdom is similar in the Old Testament versus the New Testament of God's people. In my reading plan, I have like notes at the top of each section and on the sides to tell you like what to kind of be looking for, as well as the daily videos. Those are 50% off as well. That summarize what we read, apply them to your life, give you big like Bible study takeaways and stuff like that. I'm like so grateful we built out the videos last year because they're so helping me so much this year. And I'm the one who like did most of them, but it's just a good solid resource and I'm so grateful for it. I think a lot of the time we say we should be reading the Bible and we're like, yeah, I ought to, but we don't do it because we don't have a plan. We don't have a system. We're like, what do I even read? And the, and the enemy talks us out of it. So if you have a plan of when you're going to do it, how you're going to do it, you're that much more likely to do it. And that's ultimately the goal. Putting it on sale is just to try and make it that much easier for you just to commit and to do it. So if you've been looking for that nudge, if you've been wondering, is the Lord really calling me to read the Bible? Maybe that's it. But you can also just read like the free Bible reading plans online. You don't have to do mine. I like mine because we pair Old Testament with New Testament. You're not just stuck in Job for two months. Therefore, you get like biblical theology. And what I mean by that is you get the Bible as a whole. You're not just taking sections out of context or out of the scope of Jesus. And you get to see how they point to Jesus, how they're fulfilled by Jesus, how they point to heaven, whatever. Um, whether in you're in the Old Testament or New Testament, we're making these connections for you. And then also just helping you understand what you read. I know for me, like put me in Ezekiel and I'm gonna be clueless unless I've spent hours and hours of research. And so that's what those videos are for, just to give you a, that much more of a leg up to help summarize and then build off of what you've read. So anyway, check it out. It's linked down below and definitely use the code 2024 is the year for 50% off. But let's read 
1 Corinthians. While reading the text, I noticed that a word that was repeated a lot in yesterday's reading was also mentioned here in a very famous pivotal verse. So I decided to do a quick little word study on Sophia, which is wisdom, and all the other places it was used in the book. I noticed that is really used a lot here at the beginning of 1 Corinthians and noted that down here in my notes. I also colored in another kind of like word study thing I had previously in my Bible notes that I just never got around to coloring it in, I guess, and then marked off my day on my reading plan list. So another day completed in the Grace Bible reading plan. Woot woot! At this point now, I'll watch my daily video from the Grace Bible reading plan and then maybe prayer journal and start my day. But this was a pretty average day. I would say this is typically what my Bible studies look like, like a little bit on each passage. And then, you know, at that point, I've already been <laughs> in the word for quite a while. Now, some days I have more time, like on Saturdays, if it's a Saturday morning, my boys are playing quietly. Joe's like occupied with something that he doesn't need my help with or something. I can sit there in the word for like three hours. Or if I don't have any big projects I'm working on, I can spend time time. But on the average, I would say 30 minutes to an hour. Obviously today took longer because I was filming, but this was pretty average. But I hope it inspired you that you guys don't always have to know everything when you're reading the Bible. Also, your notes can be kind of messy or you never even colored them in. So you're just coloring in last year's notes or you can just do a simple word study. And that's what your main focus is of the passage for the day. It doesn't have to be super duper in depth every single day, but a little bit every day compounds year after year. And that's the richness of taking notes in your Bible. But friends, if you liked this, you would probably like a week of Bible studies in my life, in which case you definitely want to watch this video. You get to see the broad range of like Monday through Friday of what my Bible studies can look like. I'll see you right here in this video. You don't want to miss it. Bye guys.